Because logs and exponents are inverses of each other, we can solve exponential equations using logarithms. There's two important log properties that are going to allow this to work. And since this is a review of pre-calculus, we're going to present them without proof, hoping that you prove them back in your pre-calculus class. The first one is, if I have a log base a of b raised to some exponent c, that exponent can move out in front of the log to become c times the log base a of b. So an exponent inside the log can move out in front of the log. The other property that we won't use as often, but when it comes up is nice, is log base a of a raised to some exponent. The log base a and the a can undo each other as inverses, giving us just that exponent as the solution. And we'll see this happen in our examples. So let's say we want to solve 5 to the x equals 15. Because the x is in the exponent, we'll do the opposite operation of the log to get it out. It doesn't matter what base we pick. I like to pick the natural log base because we use e a lot in business and economics. When we take the log of both sides, the exponent now can come out front, and I'll get x times the natural log of 5 equals the natural log of 15. To get x alone, I'll divide both sides by the natural log of 5. And x is equal to, I just have to do on my calculator, the natural log of 15 divided by the natural log of 5. As I do that, I need to remember to put those natural logs in parentheses. Natural log of 15, close the parentheses, divided by the natural log of 5, close the parentheses, and I get 1.68 is equal to my x. Let's try another example. Let's make it more interesting, like 3 to the 4x minus 2 equals 8. Again, because the exponent has the variable in it, We'll take the natural log of both sides, moving the exponent out front. As a block, the exponent is 4x minus 2 times the natural log of 3 equals the natural log of 8. I can distribute the natural log of 3 through to get 4x natural log of 3 minus 2 natural log of 3 equals the natural log of 8. Solving will add the part that doesn't have an x on it to both sides, 2 natural log of 3 to both sides. That's going to give me 4x natural log of 3 is equal to the natural log of 8 plus 2 times the natural log of 3. They're not like terms, so I can't combine them. But we can get the x alone by dividing by what it's multiplied by, 4 times the natural log of 3 on both sides. That's just going to leave the x. And then I just have to plug this into my calculator. As before, be careful. Every natural log needs to be in parentheses. But in addition to that, we need an extra set of parentheses around the numerator and the denominator because there's multiple things going on in both. So open a parentheses for the numerator, natural log of 8 plus 2 times the natural log of 3 close the parentheses on the numerator, divided by parentheses for the denominator, 4 natural log of 3, close the parentheses on the log, close the parentheses on the 4, and I get my solution for x is 0.973. Let's do one last example before we wrap up this section. Let's try e to the 0.04 times t equals 2. This one's really nice, because now when I try to get the exponent out and take the natural log of both sides, natural log is base e, and the e is base e, and those are inverses of each other, which is just going to leave 0.04t equals the natural log of 2. That's that b second log property that we wrote up above. 
Now to get the t alone, I just have to divide by 0.04 on both sides. And t is equal to the natural log of 2 divided by 0.04. Just make sure that natural log of 2 is in parentheses. We'll do natural log of 2 divided by 0.04. And we find out our t is 17.33. This has been a very fast review of linear, exponential, and logarithmic functions. We're just setting up what we need to know for our calculus class. It's now your turn to practice some of these on the assignment.